Hi everyone, this is Frank. Um, and today I'm going to uh, do a, a pretty quick video on uh, a, an upgrade to my Craig's uh, pocket hole jig. Um, I've had this one for oh, probably, I'd say 15 years. Um, I don't intend to get rid of it. I'm going to continue to use it. Uh, it's, it's great for small frames, small pieces of wood that you want to use for pocket hole drilling. Um, easy to get in and out um, and uh, perform your pocket hole uh, drills. Um, but trying to do plywood gets to be a little more challenging because if the sheet is large in height that sits on top of this jig, I've got to kind of go around on the back side to close this up and um, that gets to be you know a little cumbersome to get accomplished so uh, today uh, i'm going to go ahead and uh, get this thing unboxed um, this is the uh, craig jig uh, k5 kit and i'm going to go ahead and get the instructions out see what size board i need and go ahead and let's uh, let's put this thing together so that i can use it on the next project which is going to come up after this uh, after this video okay so we've got the Craig Jig K5 out of the kit. Here are all the pieces that comes inside the kit itself. You've got the base <clears throat> that uh, holds the material in place while you do the drilling. Uh, they have two side wings that come along with it, very similar to the older jig that I showed you that I have. The differences here is they these actually open up and have a place that you can store um, your speed bit or any other type of tools necessary. Uh, in the one piece they have um, the stop block for the drill bit itself, uh, an Allen wrench, uh, a couple other uh, pieces of hardware, um, the speed bit itself that comes in for uh, uh, applying the screw into the wood itself. Um, inside here they also have a little chart which is a screw length selection chart. You peel that off, put it onto the lid, and you're good to go. So they have that on one side, on the other side uh, they have some different uh, jigs, three different jigs that come inside uh, with it um, and as I go further in the instructions myself I'll get to learn about the different variances with that. Uh, the nice thing too about this is, uh, if I close these up, um, the two side wings actually have a, a dovetail cutout in them. To where you can actually uh, attach them uh, together and you can go anywhere with this jig uh, and be able to uh, utilize it as you see it to do your pocket hole drilling. Um, for me, I still want to be able to attach this down to a board like I had my other jig um, and it gives me a little bit more stability. Uh, I can hang it up onto the wall when I'm not using it and pull it back down when I, when I need to. And uh, I can also then clamp that board down onto a work, work surface like the table here and secure it while I'm doing the pocket hole drilling. Other things that comes with it, um, they have uh, one, two, three, four, five different packets of screws, um, the different types of screws. That's kind of a sampling of the screws that you can get for both hardwood and softwood. Uh, they have the uh, plugs um, for the backside if you ever wanted to, to fill in those holes where you drill for a pocket hole. Um, they come with the bit um, and what's kind of nice, this is the, uh, uh, they call it the KJD hex sharp uh, drill bit. Um, what's nice about this one compared to the older one, uh, you can use it for a speed bit, speed change on a drill. Uh, uncompared to the older version was just one solid piece of metal and you put it into a drill, a standard drill like a chuck. So that's a, a little bit of an improvement from the last jig. They also give you a, a quick release clamp um, which, is, uh, which is really nice uh, for making sure your, your uh, uh, wood is level to each other before you screw it in. Of course the instruction book and they also have a device here that you can take your drilling block out um, and you unscrew the uh, copper bit, the copper screw. You can put this in, adjust it for the necessary thickness of your wood. You know, if you're doing three quarters of an inch, 
you put it in there and then you can actually put this onto a piece of wood and um, you can go ahead clamp it down there's a, a circular area here for uh, the clamp type that they give you you can clamp it down onto large pieces of, of uh, material like a big sheet of plywood uh, and go ahead and make your drill, uh, drill holes and uh, you're good to go so that's, uh, that's kind of slick that did not come with my, my previous kit um, so I'm kind of looking forward to seeing that so when I measured this up, I'm, I'm measuring out about uh, two feet. Um, so if I go out from edge to edge, uh, give me about a quarter inch on each side, it's about two feet wide. If I come out and uh, put this uh, device, this jig, out to the edge of a piece of, of board, come out a foot, that's about as much space as I need. Kind of the same footprint as I had on my previous jig. So let's go ahead and um, we'll get this stuff out of the way here. We'll go ahead and cut up the board. Um, I have a piece here of three quarter inch Baltic birch um, that uh, is gonna be perfect for this. We'll go ahead and trim that down to one foot by two foot um, and we'll get this thing ready and prepared so that uh, we can mount it up and uh, start working on the next project. Okay, so I've got my piece of Baltic uh, birch plywood here. We're gonna go ahead and, and get the saw set up so that we can go ahead and cut it down for two uh, one foot by two foot. Okay. We're going to make a two foot uh, dimension cut first. As you can tell, I don't always use uh, my uh, my gauge on my fence. I've got two different fences here. Uh, the one that came with the, the general saw, but I also got the uh, the very super cool tools fence, um, which is pretty slick. Okay, so we'll take a look at. We are at two foot. So let's go ahead and make a cut. clean cut on the other side of the board.
got the board cut to uh, one foot by two foot. So I'm going to clean the board up a little bit to get some of the dirt off of it. And also I'm going to round over the edges a little bit so it's not so sharp when I'm handling it. Um, and then we'll, we'll uh, line it up and attach our Craig jig to it. Okay, I'm using uh, 220 grit sandpaper. Um, I had an old piece here that would work just fine. So uh, instead of uh, breaking out a new one, I just thought I'd use that and it does a great job, nice and smooth. So let's go ahead and this is probably one of the best ways I like to go and give myself a little bit of a round over on a corner on a piece of wood. Uh, it's quick, it's, um, it's, it's fairly accurate and uh, does a job. <laughs> and smooth. Uh, there's no rough edges on the board and uh, I won't get any splinters when I try to use all, utilize this. Okay, so I've got the board here and um, I've got the Craig K5 ready to go. Um, my pencil, measuring tape, my woodpecker's right angle, and some actual Craig screws. So the first thing I did is I want to make sure that I mount this to the center of the board and I went and marked um, a little pencil mark, uh, measured the distance of the base of the K5, took half the distance and made a mark on both ends. This one's a little harder to see but it's right on the edge. So now I'm going to go and measure this out. Uh, I've got a two foot board so I'm going to measure it right at one foot and I'm going to go ahead and make my mark. Then I'm going to go ahead and um, make a line, draw out a line, a center line. Okay. Take it a little bit over onto the edge as well. Okay, that way I can see my center mark. Now I'm going to go ahead and take the jig and I'm going to make it flush up to this mark on the back end. Okay, Get that flush and there we go. Now we're pretty well marked and even. I'm going to just mark myself here so I know that I don't move. And then I'll take some of the Craig um, coarse thread, inch and a quarter screws, and go ahead and screw it down to my plywood. Now 
And I'm still on center. That's good. Check my flush in the back. I am still flush and centered. See that these are inch and three, inch and a quarter screws going into the base of the K5. Um, I made sure that I did look to make to measure that the screws wouldn't come out the back of the um, template. Okay, so there's our four mounting bolts. Now we'll take a look at our sides and make sure you have the case lid pointing toward you when you apply the side wings. And I do. Okay. And these really don't need to be measured because you, the main thing is centering this up onto the board. Um, and now what I'll do with these, I'll just screw these down to secure them. You don't want to tighten them down too hard, you just want to snug them up. It's not like they're going to go anywhere and it's not like a piece of, of uh, construction or a piece of, uh, of woodworking or furniture that you need to really uh, tighten down tight. If you tighten down too tight, of, of course it's plastic and you will crack it. Okay, there you have it. Um, we now have our Craig jig finished. Ready to use, very simple. All right, so here are the two finished jigs. Again, the, the one that I've used for, for multiple years, uh, it is the uh, Craig K2000. Um, like I said, it's done me, done me well for many years. I intend to keep it and still use it in the shop. Um, and sorry about that. I zoomed in the wrong way. And then the new K5 and its uh, board that is ready to be used in the shop. You know, as I said here, with the, the major differences for me uh, is where you can clamp the piece of material here. You clamp it from in front of the jig. Uh, this one you have to clamp from the back of the jig. So this is still going to be good for small pieces of wood because I can still reach over and clamp my piece of wood in the jig. Uh, but this is going to be perfect for uh, plywood or large boards to where I can go ahead and make the uh, pressure on the clamp at the front instead of the back a lot easier to use. And I can have two, both of these set up to do uh, some assembly work and it'll make it a lot quicker. Okay? Okay, there you have it. Uh, we're done mounting up our new K5 onto the jig, ready to rock and roll. Uh, it's going to be a really good compliment to, uh, to my workshop and uh, I'm, I can't wait to uh, start utilizing this. Of course, i got to finish up doing this setup on a couple things. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty anal, so I <laughs> will read the instructions uh, to make sure that I fully understand all the new capable features of the K5. So, uh, again, I hope this uh, video helps you. Uh, it's basically just showing you um, what I do in my shop and uh, hopefully it can help you to make some decisions or think of some different ideas for uh, what you're doing in your neck of the woods. So again, this is Frank. Thank you for joining me. 
Uh, if you like the, uh, the video, uh, please go ahead and hit that thumbs up like button. And uh, if you have any comments you'd like to make, go ahead and make those comments. Thanks again. You guys have a great day. We'll see you around the block.